الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا حي على الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما Brothers and sisters pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us sincerity to speak the truth in the light of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To understand them, to accept them in the hearts and to apply them in the life. Ameen thumma ameen. Today is the continuation of our khutbahs where we are talking about the etiquette of a Muslim on Friday. Today inshallah we will be talking about going from house to the masjid to attend Juma prayer. So what are the guidance that Islam has given to us? Number one, Quran speaks about it. Quran speaks about the starting of the namaz, adhan. Quran speaks about certain things to be done and things which are not allowed to be done while the adhan is being given. Also, Quran speaks about specific etiquette of the Muslims on Friday which refers to the business, trading. And Allah praises these people who are traders. They do tradings, they do business, especially on Friday. And when they hear the adhan, what they do, Allah prays about them too. So this is how we will start, inshallah. Allah SWT speaks about uh, the businessmen in Surah al Jum'ah. Chapter 62, verse 9. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون O oh, you who believed when the adhan of the namaz of Friday is given salah, salat al-jum'ah the adhan is given for that فاسعوا إلى ذكر الله so strive and struggle and do quickly go to the remembrance of Allah. وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ And stop your business, your trading. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ This is best in your favor if you really understand that. So here Allah SWT gives us the command that when the adhan is being given, then stop your job your tradings, business, anything that you do. 
Why the bay'ah is mentioned? Because normally in the Arab culture, Friday used to be the like a day off or holiday. All the people who have like the uh, festivals or the bazaar they call it or the uh, mall or show where they sell the things. So that's the reason the trade is mentioned over here and Allah says that stop your business and move to the remembrance of Allah. With this, in Islam, during the lifetime of Rasul Sallallahu during the lifetime of Abu Bakr an, during the life, lifetime of Umar ibn al-Khattab, in Islam, Adhan was only one for the Jummah. And people would just hear the Adhan and they would rush to the masjid. But during the time of Uthman bin Affan, the Islam expanded so much that it was, you know, uh, hard for everyone to listen to the Adhan and come and get ready and attend the Jummah. So Uthman bin Affan عن, with the consensus of the Sahaba, it's not an innovation, it's not bid'ah, with the consensus, consensus of the Sahaba, he introduced two Adhan. The first Adhan which is to prepare yourself when you hear, and this is what normally the scholars are saying that based on this ayah, Uthman عن, he put this wisdom that those people who are in the market, and if they have to close down their business and they have to come to the masjid, they should have enough time for that. So he introduced this adhan and this adhan was not in the masjid. It was in the center of the town, Medina. Just for the people to understand that and they should come and get ready for the namaz, for the salah. And the actual adhan for the Juma prayer is the time when the imam used to enter the masjid and when he ascends the pulpit, the member, at that time the mawdhin gives the adhan. That's the actual adhan for the salah. After that adhan, the imam has to deliver the khutbah. So there are two adhan, but that adhan, the people they take an, a, a, you know, argument, they make an argument saying, innovation is allowed for the wisdom, for the hikmah. And they give the example of Uthman bin Affan. Uthman bin Affan is not the one who introduced the adhan. Adhan was already there. And it was not an innovation because he didn't give two adhan in the same masjid at the same time. He gave one adhan in the market, is an adhan in Arabic is announcement. The word adhan itself is called announcement. Loudspeaker is called then in Arabic. So that is adhan which means the announcement that all Muslims or believers who are busy in their trading they should listen to this adhan and get prepared. You know, they should prepare themselves to attend the namaz so they don't miss this benefit which I'm going to speak, inshallah. Now, Allah speaks about the trading and Allah speaks about the traders. Now, many of you, mashallah, especially in Luton, I know, halal or haram is between you and Allah. But most of us in Luton, they do business. So let's see what Allah speaks about the business people. It is mentioned in Surah Al-Nur, chapter 24. رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ There are certain men. Their business will not prevent them in remembrance of Allah. Their business uh, sorry, establishing of the salah and zakat, paying of zakat. So Allah speaks about the businessmen and He says that there are businessmen, but these businessmen are religious and practicing business, businessmen. For them, business will not stop them from remembrance of Allah. It won't stop them from establishing the salah, whether it is five daily prayers or Friday prayer and also paying of zakat of their wealth that Allah has blessed them with. Why? This is the reason. And this quality, if Allah gives all of us, then subhanAllah, we will be amongst those who are mentioned in this. Pray to Allah SWT, may Allah make us amongst them. يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَلَبِصَارَ These people are not only businessmen. 
these people are truly believers of Allah and they truly believe in the Day of Judgment. And also they know the situation of the Day of Judgment. On that day, the hearts will change and eyes will change. So they are scared and they are worried about that day. So they, because of that, that they know that they will be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the heart which is inclined towards the dunya, that heart will be cushioned on the day of judgment. The eyes that looks for the dunya, their eyes will be changed on the day of judgment. Allah will ask about all that thing and the hearts will change, the eyes will change on the day of judgment. So these true believers, they are businessmen, but they are not businessmen who worship the money or their business. They worship Allah and they establish the salah and they give zakat of their wealth that Allah has given to them. And because they know that Allah will ask them about their remembrance of Allah, Allah will ask them about their salah, Allah will ask them about their zakat. So this is, uh, mashallah, praise made by Allah for those who are trade men. Merchandise. Why they give up all this business and they rush to the zikrullah, iqami salah? They don't care for the business, especially at this particular call. Is because Because all they want from Allah to give them the best reward of what they are doing. They are doing halal business. That's part of Islam and it's part of ibadah. But to give up the business, which is halal business, and establishing the remembrance of Allah, establishing the salah, and giving the zakat, they want more and better reward for that. That's the reason they do this. And they want Allah to bless them in their these deeds. In the business, as well as in the three acts, zikrullah, iqam salah and ita'i zakat. Wallahu yarzuqu man yasha'u bighayri hisab. Chapter 24, verse 37 and 38, Allah ends this for the business people. And this is a reminder that if you are in Pakistan, if you are in India, if you are in Bangladesh, or if you are in any Arab country, and if Allah has destined the risk for you in this country, you will make a way to get your risk over here. This is one promise of Allah. Second promise of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chooses the people to whom He wants to give whatever He wants. Bighayri hisab. There is no accountability, there is no limit to Allah's favors when Allah wants to give to someone. So, what lesson we learn from this? Either we are employees or employers. Either we work for the company or we own the company where people are working for us. These are the good qualities of the believers. First thing is, all the good deeds or bad deeds they do or they stop is because they believe in the Day of Judgment. Because the Day of Judgment, everything will be asked. So this is the first thing. So to be saved on the Day of Judgment, they first of all work out in their life what are the things that could bring them to Allah, what are the things that could keep them away from Allah. And that's the business. Na baap bada na bhaiya, sabse bada rupaiya. That's the saying in our Urdu language. Father is not big, na brother is not big. The biggest thing is rupaiya, paise, money. So this is a very clear thing. So the first hindrance, first barrier that could stop a person from remembrance of Allah, from the t establishing of the salah or giving the zakat is the wealth itself. So Allah says that the believers will not bring wealth as a barrier for this. Because they fear Allah, they fear the day of judgment. And then Allah SWT is saying, they don't only do because they think, oh, it's made it compulsory for us, so I have to do it. No, they are happily doing this and they are wishing better reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever the act of ibadah they do, they don't do it because they think it's a burden and it has to be taken off. No. They wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them blessing and more and more and Allah gives them the reward for the deed that they are doing. And then Allah promises all of us 
that when you are running after your risk, al hakumut takathur hatta zurtum al maqabir. You are running towards the money till you reach your death. Allah subhanahu wa taala has promised, "Wallahu yarzuqu man yasha bi ghairi hisab." Don't worry about the wealth. Allah subhanahu wa taala will give you whatever He has destined in abundant. It, there is no limit to it. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم إن الحمد لله نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد so الحمد لله whether we are businessmen or we are employers, or whether we are employees, this is the command of Allah, that when you listen to the Adhan of Jummah, close down everything and rush to the Jummah. Now when you come to the Jummah prayer, there are certain things that you have to prepare yourself in the house, and there are certain things that you have to maintain the etiquette while you are in the masjid. The first thing is, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the best is amongst you is the one who comes at the earliest time of the Jummah. The earliest time of the Jummah is that you come before the Imam comes. And the latest, the last deadline is when Imam is in the second rakat and he's about to go to the ruku and you attend his second ruku in the second rakat. That's the deadline. So when you come to the namaz, this should be your intention that you should be the first one to come first in this. Why? Because on the day of Jummah, on Friday, any place where the Jummah will take place, whether it is community center, whether it is regular masjid, Allah appoints angels and they have a books or scrolls or notebooks or diaries with them and they write down the names of the first come first. So this is the first thing that you have to remember that you have to prepare yourself and you should have the intention that you should reach the namaz, uh, Jummah prayer before the Imam. Any time you can come, no problem. Then a reward is mentioned. During the time of Rasul the biggest and expensive uh, gift is considered to be the camel. So Rasul is saying that when a person comes to the masjid, Angels records him. If he is the first one, Allah gives him the reward of as if he has sacrificed the camel in the path of Allah and served the poor people. So reward of the camel, sacrificing in the name of Allah. If a person, the second person will get the reward of sacrificing the cow in the name of Allah. The third one is the goat. The fourth one is hen. And the fifth one is poor guy like myself, egg. But alhamdulillah, Allah gives that. So when the, I'm the poorest man, mashallah, you people are wealthiest here, mashallah. May Allah bless you all, alhamdulillah. Bless you in your life and bless you in your wealth, inshallah. Amen. Also bless you in Iman, inshallah. Amen. So, the last one is the one who gets the reward of sacrificing one egg in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then when the Imam enters, the angels close their diaries, they sit in front of the Imam. Okay, alhamdulillah, we will say, oh, you know, non muslim will laugh at us. Look, there's Muslims. Oh, they think the angels are there. Who can be, where the angel will be sitting over here? They all are already squeezing each other. No, we believe in the unseen. Yes, we believe in unseen. So, alhamdulillah, we don't have to know that where the angels are. Alhamdulillah. So, they will be attending and listening to the Jummahs. And then no registration. Still, your, regist your Jummah will be accepted, but you will not be amongst the good, better, and best. You may be before good, you may be good, you may be better, you may be best. Best is the one who comes before Imam, and the one comes first. So that's the best. Then a superlative degree, then comparative degree in English grammar, and the last is a normal adjective. So good, better, and best alhamdulillah so muslims they should get the best one this is the first thing now how to prepare yourself first of all you have to the best again 
good, better and best is that you take shower. Every Friday, you must take shower. That's the best thing. But if you can't, okay, then at least make ghusl, uh, sorry, the wudu and come. Now that ghusl which is mentioned in the hadith, that ghusl is ghusl of the janaba, the, uh, the major impurity. Major impurity is when a woman is clean from her menstrual cycle, then that is, she has to take that ghusl. When spouses take their sexual relationship after they finish, that they have to clean themselves, that is called uh, major ghusl is needed for that. Major impurity, that ghusl is needed for that. And I'll tell you how to do it in a short way, inshallah. Or a person has got wet dreams, night, night dreams, so alhamdulillah. E either way, these are counted as major impurities. For that, that is a ghusl. That ghusl has to be performed when you are making ghusl for Juma. Not like just say, standing in front of the shower, finish and come out. Your ghusl is accepted, but as I said, the best is that ghusl because the hadith says ghusl ka janaba, ghusl janaba. And ghusl janaba is that you have the intention in your heart, say bismillah, clean your private part front and back, make complete wudu as you normally make wudu. How to make the wudu? Say bismillah, wash your hands, right hand up to the wrist three times is compulsory, uh, one time is compulsory, three times is the sunnah, then left hand from all the fingers and uh, up to the wrist. Wash your hand three times and do like, you know, go through with the water in between your fingers because in this country you may have dry skin because of the cold. But in the, the Arab world, they used to get dry anyhow because of the, you know, the desert, all sand around them. So this is washing your hands up to, this is the wudu I'm saying, for the ghusl. And this is the same wudu that you normally have to make. Wash your hands, say bismillah, wash your hands up to the wrist three times, the right one, then the left three times up to the wrist. Rinse your mouth and nose three times together if you can. If you can't, three times the mouth, three times nose. Inhaling and exhaling, your nose should be clean three times. And if you think it is dry inside and there is a thick something in it, you can use your little finger of your left hand and clean your inner part of the nose. Then you wash your face from forehead to the chin and from ear to ear. That's your face three times. And if you have beard, mashallah, beard not for fashion, beard for respect. So I don't respect any person having big beard and he is the worst of the character. So beard will not change you. Beard will not reward you. The character will reward you. Allah will look at your character, how you are. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa la asamikum wa lakin yanzuru ma fi qulubikum wa amalikum. Hadith in Sahih Muslim. Allah does not look at your face. Allah does not look at your appearance. Allah looks what is there in your heart and what you do with your limbs. So that's what important. So if you have the beard, take water, do the khilal. That is called khilal of your beard. That means taking wet hand and clean your beard. Then you take right hand from top to the fingers to the elbow, wash it three times, the right hand, then wash your hand from finger to the elbow, three times the left one. Then you do the masa. Masa is also very important, my brothers and sisters. We people are just doing like this. This is not masa. I've seen so many people, they say, okay, this is well, one third of the head is done. No. Masa is Bada Abi Mukad Hadith in Sahil Bukhari. Bada Abi Mukadami Rasihi. Thumma the Haba Bihima Ila Kafa. Thumma Radda Ila Makan and Ledi Bada Aminhu. This is the hadith of uh, Rasulullah in Sahil Bukhari. Bada Abi Mukadami Rasihi. Thumma the Haba Ila Huma Bihima Ila Kafa. This is the cup. Till here. He started from his forehead, he took it till the neck. Then waradda waraja or radda ila makani ladi bada minhu. Then he brought it back to the place where he started with. Wa adhala sabba bataini dahila udhinehi. Adhala sabba bataini dahila udhinehi. Wa masaha bi ibha mehi vahira udhinehi. These are the Arabic words of the hadith. Very clearly mentioned in the hadith that Rasulullah said after doing this, he took his index fingers cleaned inside part, in inner part of the ears, and then with the thumbs, he wiped over the upper part of the 
ears. So this is how the wudu is done. Then you have to wash your feet, starting with the right one. First you have to wash your first feet up to the ankle. And then you have to go through with the wet fingers over your uh, fingers. Because uh, again, as I said, that could be your fingers might be dry. And you won't be able to, you know, be able to reach the water or water reach there. So do like this with your fingers. Or you can take your little finger of the left hand and go through with the inner part of the fingers of your left, uh, first right feet and the left, left feet. And it has to be washed up to the ankle, with the ankle. After that, you can go to a place where if it is the toilet where you do the wudu, you come out, you make the dua like raising your hand, your index finger saying, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatahirin. This is the dua that you have to make it after you have done your wudu. But now you are, you are not doing wudu only. You are doing ghusl. So you have to stop for the wudu, dua for the ghusl, uh, wudu, after the wudu. You have to wait. Now do the ghusl. Ghusl is, as I said, those for the major impurities, wash your head first. You can go to the shower, wash your head, and mashallah, if you have thick hair, then make sure that all the roots reach the water. Then your right side of the body from top to bottom should be wet. And your left side of the body from top to bottom should be wet. And if you have not touched your skin with the private path, hand to hand with the skin to skin, with your private path, to your private part, then your wudu is still valid even if you're naked. People, they say, how can your wudu is valid because uh, you are naked. Naked will not, being naked will not invalidate your wudu. Okay, you can't make ghusl with the garments on you. You have to take it off. So, but the wudu is, well, one of the ways the wudu will be invalidated is when you touch your private part, skin by skin, Intentionally or unintentionally. That's the understanding of the Jamhur ulama, majority of the scholars. So when you have done this ghusl, come out of the place from the, the ghusl place, and then you read this dua. That I bear witness that there is no worthy to be no one to be worthy of worship except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger and his servant. And oh Allah make me amongst those who repent, and Allah make me amongst those who keep themselves neat and clean. This is the translation of the Arabic hadith which I read. After that, you should wear the best garment that you have for the Juma. If you don't have it, buy one. This is the hadith of Rasulullah. Buy one and wear a nice suit because this is the day of Eid for the Muslims. And what do you do on the day of Eid? This is the hadith. Juma is Eid for us. So especially, huh? Look your Imam, mashallah. No objection. You always say the outfit of Sheikh Abdul Majid is good. Yeah, this is the Sunnah. I'm not very rich, Alhamdulillah, but I'm saying I like to. Why should we remain behind of Hollywood and Bollywood? We are Islam wood. Yes. An Imam should be of the level. Alhamdulillah. So this is the Sunnah of our Rasul and Sunnah of our Imams. Imam Malik Rahmatullah. If he has to give one lecture in a day, Every day he would change his dress, his garment, his clothes for every lecture. Alhamdulillah. So this is a sunnah. You should look smart, handsome. Where are you going? I'm going to attend Juma. Yes. And there will be Juma and Juma gathering even in the Jannah, Hadith in Tirmidhi. So Juma is very important for us. Okay. Finally, wear a nice garment for the Juma. Alhamdulillah. Let's see who will compete me in my outfit next Juma. Let's see. The best one get prized. Alhamdulillah. Okay, then comb your hair, apply, you know, uh, oil if you can. Alhamdulillah. Perfume is important, so important that Rasulullah said that if you don't have your perfume, borrow from your wife, but you use it when you come to the masjid. And then he said, remove all the bad smell, whether you have tambaku in your tobacco in your mouth, or cigarette, or shisha, or the pipe. Anything that smells your mouth should not come to the masjid. And I told you the hadith, Rasulullah turned away the Sahaba. He said that those who are coming with the best smell in their mouth, they should not come close to the masjid. Not enter the masjid, though they should not come close to the masjid. So, remove all the best smell, have best perfume. Alhamdulillah, you can hug me, you'll see the perfume that I have. 
So alhamdulillah. So this is the sunnah of Rasulullah And then when you walk to the masjid, Allahu Akbar. When you walk to the Jummah prayer, for every step, one rank is raised for you. For every step, one sin is removed from your record. And all the creatures of Allah, all the creatures, whether they are inside the sea, under the rock, between earth and heaven, all of them pray for you. Ask Allah to forgive you. And they pray for you till you come back to your house. This is the blessing of the person walking from his house to the masjid. And mashallah, after that, when you enter, as I said, the first come first. So this is the etiquette. Hopefully, inshallah, we will follow this. And this is the sunnah. Yes, ma'am. Same driving count. You can reward. Same reward. Same reward. If you are driving for every step, normally the steps will be more when you are driving because of mashallah, four wheels are there. So you get four times more reward. Don't worry. This is Islam. There is no, you know, in Islam, nothing is less for Allah. Allah says, you ask me, you will get bored asking me, but I will not get bored in giving you. So ask Allah, alhamdulillah. Okay, then inshallah, if you have got any other questions, we can talk about that afterwards. But next Juma, the etiquette of Muslims in the Salah with the Imam. That we will do inshallah in the next Juma. Inna Allahu malaikati yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa naka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barikta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim wa naka hamidu majid. Wa aqimi salah. Abdullah, iqam al dhidu. Yusuf, computer one. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, shadu an la ilaha illallah. Shadu anna Muhammad wa rasulullah. Hayya ala salam.